Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking to Damien Richardson, who's running for the Senate. You might know Damien from um, the Cafe Lockdown shows. It's been a, quite of a sensation online the last six months in the freedom movement and the uh, you know people who question the mandates and the vaccines. And uh, obviously, also you might know Damien from Australian film and television, um, uh, from shows like Neighbours uh, and uh, many other Australian films. Um, and theatre as well. So we're here to talk about uh, Damien and to interview him about wh why he's running for the Senate. So welcome to the show, man. Thanks, Richard. It's no good to be here. Thanks, man. Excellent. So um, tell us a little bit about, you know, your background, I guess, for people who might not uh, you know, know you've obviously mm -hmm. worked in Australian film mm -hmm. and TV a bit. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, okay. Well, I, I was studying politics and drama at um, Flinders University. Um, uh, that university was sort of built in homage to the left, you know what I mean? A lot of sort of Soviet architecture and stuff like that. <laughs> and I left there and I went, because I got into the Victorian College of the Arts. Yes. Um, in, I think that was uh, 1989, I came to Melbourne yep. and haven't really been back to Adelaide since. I've been back a couple of times, obviously, to visit friends and family. And after that, I graduated from the VCA and then began the arduous task of trying to find jobs as a, you know, as a jobbing actor in Australia, which sometimes is fantastic for yep. me. I did better than most and mm -hmm. not as well as others, as, as they say, you know, mm. but yes, yeah, so I had a pretty successful um, acting career. Yep. And you had an eight year stint on Neighbours, is that right? No, no, about four years. About four years? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How was that? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was a job, so it was good. Yep. Yeah. 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 And you noticed that near the end it was getting a bit woke, getting into that kind of oh, politics? I don't think it was necessarily towards the end. I think it was probably woke by the time I got there. Yeah. I don't think, um, yeah, it might have, it might have amped up, yeah. might have ramped up. I guess some of that might be a search for relevance because, I mean, yeah. by the time I finished the show, it had been going for 35 years, so I got there mm. in its 31st year. Um, it's now finished altogether and after 37 years. And so what do you do with a show that's been going for 31 years? Yes. It probably doesn't have any need to keep sustaining itself that comes internally. So it's mm. got to look for an external reason yep. to exist. And I guess in a lot of ways, they just, they just took on woke clothing, yep. as a lot of shows do. Shows, do. Sh shows really start with that too. I, my struggle with it was, the, I think, the, the basis of who was watching Neighbours. Who were your demographic watching yeah. them? I think they were, it's particularly kept going because of England. Yeah. didn't really do so well in Australia, mm. although there's some loyal followers definitely mm. in Australia. And what were they? They were just, they wanted uh, the soap opera. Yeah. They wanted Neighbours. Exactly. They didn't want to be beaten over the head with how they should treat trans transgender people or what their, <laughs> what the right way to think about the, um, you know, uh, gay marriage was. Mm. They just wanted to come and see, you know, Tom kiss Debbie, yeah. have a falling out. Maybe I could crack a few jokes along the way, yes. I played the simpleton, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and that was my struggle. And I actually got to the point where I actually went to one of the producers and in fairness to them, I'll leave them nameless, obviously, I said, I expressed my concerns, particularly what they were doing to the masculine characters because they just sort of um, demasculated them so badly, emasculated them so badly mm -hmm. that I thought, well, who would be interested in them? Particularly not this, like they, they worked out um, what their demographic was watching the show, and it's like women from 40 to 60. Mm. I thought, well, these women are not going to be interested in these men mm. that are so emasculated. Exactly. And in fairness to her, she agreed with me. But she said, what do I do? Mm. I've got all these really woke writers, mm. you know, maybe the oldest one's 28, you know, she's probably graduated as a feminist from some university, you know, got green hair and mm. tattoos and earrings and all the rest of it, you know, and probably got a couple of gay writers as males mm. to sort of sort out the gender. There's no gender imbalance, of course, when there's more females in the writing room. Yep. There's only an imbalance if there's not enough males. So how do they, they rectify the imbalance? They have two gay writers as well. So the chance of pulling it back yep. to, into any other direction um, but suddenly she said, oh, it's like a runaway train. It so is. she heard me. I was surprised. I thought, here we go. Here's trouble. Why are you doing this, Damien? <laughs> Why are you going in there having this uh, yeah. unnecessary conversation? But as it turns out, it wasn't. I took that risk and had a good conversation with her. Nothing happened. Mm. I don't think that's why they got rid of my character either, to be honest. I mm. think it was, you know, my time was up. They mm -hmm. said to me when I started, I'd probably have a four-year contract. Maybe they even said three, and it turned out to be a four-year contract. So, you mm -hmm. know, probably got out just in time in a way since the yeah. show's uh, reached its demise a couple of years later. Now yep. I can say it's because, you know, they got rid of my character. Yep, that's it. You can. <laughs> and, um, I mean, it, it always seemed to me that, um, you know, 
I mean, the neighbours did go out to kind of like middle Australia, to like the average kind of Joe or whatever. Mm. And also mm. to people overseas, it was something that kind of projected the, the, the basic Australian lifestyle. And, and we do live in sort of semi-affluence here, at least compared to third world countries. And that was one of the popular reasons, you know, you would often see it when you were travelling in Southeast Asia or in Thailand or in Bali or something it was on. And people were watching it because it was kind of something they could look up to or wish to emulate. So it's a clever uh, setup, really, mm -hmm. when it came about, what, in the early 80s, yeah. that there's, they're neighbours. So yeah. you can just go in their slice of life, you can look at each household, they're all dealing with each other. It was quite, it was quite clever. Yeah, it is an ideological piece of work, and obviously it had been running for a very long time, like 35 years yeah. or something? Yeah, well, 37 when it finished. So, I think so has it, it finished it finishes, now? Or is I think it finishes shooting in a couple of months' time, yeah. unless some saviour comes along. Yeah. So this argy bargy they did every time the contract came up. Yeah. You know, Channel 4 had it, BBC had it for a long time, but Channel 4 had it by the time I had it. Yeah. And there was all this argy bargy towards renewing the contract on Neighbours. Yes. Yeah. Well, would there be enough money? Well, this could be it, guys. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. They'd have to chat to the cast and crew and say, look, this actually could be it. Yeah. So we're sorry we can't tell you what's going on yet, but we're in negotiations. Yeah. And I think a lot of that was just the you know business argy-bargy to mm -hmm. see if maybe the Australian government would tip in a couple of million to keep the quota up for Australian content. Exactly. You know, all that sort of stuff. But this time, I think it genuinely feels to me like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's the it's the end of the road. End of the road. Barring, barring some sort of a miracle. And when did you leave the show? But COVID's done that. It's cleaned out a lot of things. It has. It's, it's cleaned out a lot. You know? yeah. When did you leave the show? Uh, the late 2019. Late 2019. Yeah. So a couple yeah. of years later, it's, it's finished. So, yeah, yeah, and then the pandemic came just yeah. straight, sort of at the end of yeah. yeah. They kept production up during the pandemic. Yeah, they did, yeah. which is sort of surprise. And these are one of these are the inconsistencies yeah, that of cause you so much concern because mm -hmm. why were they able to do that? No one ever wore a mask either on yeah. a show, particularly. Yeah. I mean, well, why didn't they ever wear a mask? I know, it's such, such an important thing to show to us. No one would dare ever smoke on, on the exactly. show. You know what I mean? So There's a lot of... Uh, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, within the film and television community, I've noticed that with a lot of productions as well, um, that you know people could pretty much go everywhere like nothing was going on. Yeah. If you're within the film and television community, yeah. like, or if you're mm. part of a big production. For example, another mm. friend of mine who was an independent filmmaker from the Melbourne Underground Film Festival, he travelled to New York right in the middle of the pan. I, I, okay. I was on his page and I was like, yeah. what the hell are you doing? And he goes, oh, I just got a, got a job. And it's because it was part of a bigger budget film. Mm -hmm. No trouble. Yeah. No mask, no mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. Which makes you wonder. That, and that's what made me start to wonder and sit around and think, particularly maybe I had too much time on my hands as we all did, was sitting at home for hours and hours and hours and weeks and weeks and months and months mm -hmm. on end, thinking, well, hang on, is this the propaganda of the machine? And it will allow the propaganda to keep going because it needs, especially now we're all at home mm -hmm. uh, in captivity, watching our screens, yes. it needs the propaganda to keep pumping into our living rooms. That... That's something that did occur to me, you know, and if you look deeply into it, you think, well, maybe there is some case to be made for that. Well, it is strange. Obviously, you know, I mean, Netflix became a huge thing, obviously, in lockdown. Everyone watched Netflix. I remember it started with that, um, that show, Tiger King or whatever. And then, oh, yes. And then there's a lot, but there's a lot of shows that were obviously being produced during lockdown. Some of them sl shut down for six months or whatever, but it is interesting um, to note that. And uh, so I would like to ask you, what kind of got you um, into the freedom movement itself? Because obviously, you know, you, you're... you're uh, you know, an actor who's done a lot of interesting work in film and television. And then uh, what were your reactions originally to the pandemic and how did you, uh, I guess, transfer from, I guess, the thing we all suffered from for somebody who actually became a kind of, um, you know, part of Cafe Lockdown and the whole part of the freedom movement? Well, it was that, like I've just said, it was those inconsistencies and mm -hmm. they were everywhere. I just saw yeah. glaring inconsistencies in the narrative all the time. We weren't allowed to wear masks to start with because it would be detrimental to our health because we wouldn't be professional enough to know how to actually use them. Then it went from that to if you don't wear a, a mask, you're trying to kill your grandmother, you know. Mm -hmm. And and those other inconsistencies they talk about, you could shoot a film and that was okay. Neighbours could continue to shoot throughout it with the pretense of doing check-ins and stuff as mm -hmm. if that made a difference. They were still, you know, uh, what kissing each other. I, yeah. I mean, I didn't watch the show, so I imagine they were. No one ever had to wear a mask. That mm -hmm. was okay. You know, I saw Barack Obama having his 60th. And yeah. No one had a mask on there except for the hired help, maybe. Yeah. And, and this this happened consistently. The New York Gala, too, was like that. Yeah, you on know, a consistent like basis. Everyone who was at the gala didn't wear a mask, but the help all had to. That's, That's like, right, yeah. And yeah. it's definitely, that had, that had a definite class system. Oh, Nancy Pelosi had a similar, he had a, yeah. a dinner party at her yeah. place. Yeah. yeah. And it's something, too, that it kind of, uh, it's interesting the way the left didn't re react more to it, because it was such a class thing it was like people who were in the elite 
were basically exempt from COVID, yeah, but yeah. people who were kind of what you call working class or, you know, often immigrants mm. as well mm. and uh, people mm. of colour, That's right. they were all wearing masks. You know, mm. why didn't the less... Slave class, exactly, the right. class that they're meant to protect yeah. and preserve has been, been sacrosanct because of multiculturalism, yet who cares? Exactly. Suddenly it didn't matter at all. I know, I know. It's such inconsistencies. And that's why I, was, I couldn't sit at home with that inconsistency mm. anymore. Mm. I was wrangling with it a lot. Mm. I'd wrangled with it a lot since I'd been involved in the arts anyway, to be yeah. honest, Richard, you know, mm. particularly as I've matured more. Yeah. Um, and maybe the arts has gone more extreme to the left. Mm. It has no pretense anymore to operating somewhere in the middle. Mm. So it seems like propaganda very often. So eventually I just thought, no, that's COVID to me was the straw that broke the camel's back. And I thought enough's enough. Yep. If I don't stand up, mm. how do I feel about myself? I've got children too. Yep. I want them to stand up for what they think is right, you know, in good faith. Mm. So you started going to some of the protests, did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And you were at yeah. the shrine, weren't you? I was at the shrine eventually, yep. And is that yeah. where you met Michael from Capital? No, Michael? actually, in all honesty, I, I said that the other day in an interview, and I did meet him at the shrine technically that day, mm. but uh, we'd met a couple of days beforehand. I'd seen him, we'd been on some, you know, uh, uh, Telegram group yeah, yeah. or something like that. We've been talking yeah. in a group Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the front of the CFMEU, which was a couple of days before. Uh, yes, the shrine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that was there. a yeah, that was a real um, what you'd call a crisis moment. It I was thought. a crisis moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The CFM and you again because it was like it very much like the truckers uh, thing that happened in Canada with Trudeau. But it was it seemed to be people who were traditionally left wing were rising up against you know and, and this whole accusation that, that the union movement was like far right or something it was yeah. ridiculous well it's a puppet the union yeah. movement's a puppet of the corporations and the institutions they're doing deals they're all trying to stay inside of that system yeah. get jobs with each other well it's people like John Secker and stuff yeah. who are the leaders what yeah. they do is, is they corrupt the leaders you yeah. know I mean they're, they're, I mean, the leaders of the unions mm. are long known to be thugs and, yeah. and to be connected to you know drug dealing and money laundering of course this is just uh, speculation and Sally world. McManus came out and called us fascists neo-fascists yeah. and stuff. I was like, what are you talking about? I was just there with people eating pizza. So the CFM and you happened, and then that led to the shrine. So what was your, what was your thoughts on the shrine that day? Because well, that was first pretty... it led to the Westgate Bridge, yeah. and that was, a, I would say, a really bad day for the government. I yeah. think the government were humiliated yeah. by the Westgate Bridge. Uh, there was a phalanx of police that set up on the side of the Westgate Bridge as we were coming back down. There was thousands of us. I'd say at least 40,000 people, which wasn't as big as the crowds did get eventually, but it was a significant crowd. Um, so we were coming down, there's a phalanx of police set up there with all that gear. They suddenly had that right yeah. gear. Yeah, where'd that come yeah, from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In mm -hmm. Hong Kong, it looked like it came from Hong Kong. It did, didn't it? But and what this militarization... Made in China. This militarization of the police. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, this is nothing we've seen before in Australia, and shouldn't no. people be way more worried? I mean, why do the police need to look... They look They look like the kind of police force you would see patrolling the streets of Iraq or well, Afghanistan. That's right. yeah. And it's not like they got that equipment rushed in. They had that yeah. equipment ready to go. So this is, yeah, these are the concerning issues, aren't they? You mm. know, and we walked around that phalanx. There was a lot of young, you know, fit um, uh, tradesmen that yeah. were, you know, uh, had that energy. Yeah. Um, ready to, for a fight. Yeah, ready for a fight, really. Yeah. And they were throwing projectiles and stuff, and the police were, you know, it was, it was pretty tense. But in the end, we just walked around them. Yeah. And they just, what yeah. could they do? What could they, they do? do? And I think it was really humiliating for yeah. the government. And yeah. so then the next day, yeah. but the, you know, the trade, the trades people were saying, oh, every day, every day, every day was mm. a chant. Like, we're just going to keep going, keep this up until mm. they drop the mandates. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, that wasn't the case. It turned out the next day, mm -hmm. the numbers were much, much, much lower. Now, if the lumber, numbers had been that big, mm -hmm. the government would have been in real trouble. But yeah. they were ready for that. Yeah. They yeah. heard that. They yeah. saw what was happening. So the, the amount of forces they had um, gathered in opposition to us yes. were ready for a big turnout. But that turnout wasn't so big. It was yeah. big enough. But yep. yeah, well, and I imagine that led to what happened at the shrine, you know, which the was, union you know, thugs would have, you know, got in, get in amongst the uh, the uh, the work, the body politic, and yeah. kind of like, um, you know, said you can't go and things like that. You know, I mean, uh, you, and if you do go, you won't get jobs. I imagine that's how it works. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, yeah. I don't doubt it for a second. You know, that's always the threat, isn't it? You won't get a job, but that's the threat yeah. to me now coming out. And what am I saying, really, that's so bad, that's so mm. outrageous, but it's not in a line or in accord with exactly. like, this globalist enterprise that we're all meant to undertake. And therefore, whatever I do is under the threat of, well, you'll never earn any money again. How do you feel about that? That's just the consequence of your actions, you know? So I know. I mean, the, and, and the idea that that kind of talk is, is, is okay, and it's been okay, obviously, this has kind of been happening for a long time, what you'd call 
cancel culture where yeah. like if you say something or do something you know your career can technically be over i mean obviously i'm somebody myself who's had that happen to me mm. uh you know where, where like people threaten you and you know like if if you if you kind of deviate from groupthink mm. or deviate from um you know the hive mind or whatever but it's like you've always made a career out of being yeah. that person <laughs> haven't you you're it's like true. the one person that they can handle in the system that gets a, stands outside of it and critiques it in many respects you know true. Yeah. True, and which is um, a really important role for for the artist. I think so, and I think I, I noticed before Donald Trump, you know, it was generally tolerated in the sense that mm. most people w within the film community were were lefties, but they would tolerate my right wing yeah. position. But we nearly did a film together. You and yeah, I were going to do a true. film together, and, that, that, film down, yeah. and it didn't happen because of circumstance. Yeah. But I remember even then, you know, and no one had ever come up to me and said, "Keep away from Richard no. Wollstonecraft." No one had said that to me. No, they didn't need to. Yeah. But I knew yeah. instinctively. Oh, hang on, Richard's trouble, isn't he? <laughs> Which didn't stop me from reading your script or being interested in it, but nonetheless, there was a part of me that went, "Oh, hang on a minute." So Which how does that, how does it happen? Do you I know, know. Like, like I say, no one actually literally sat me down and said that to me. Yeah. But you know how you're supposed to think. <laughs> you do to operate in that yep. sphere. You know. Well, you're sitting that, next to me now, so obviously. Well, this is it. Yeah, <laughs> so it's real trouble now. <laughs> you're in trouble now. Career mate. over. If it wasn't already, <laughs> I'm making sure of it today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. Um, you know, it, it, I, I'd heard that, I guess, you know, and... But then you meet you, right? Yeah. So if you sit down and just talk to yeah, you, you're yeah. just... I'm you're pretty a normal guy. Yeah, yeah, you're a reasonable fellow. You just got, you've got your ideas. They're okay. Exactly. You're open to them being challenged. As a matter of fact, I think you quite enjoy the fact oh, that they're challenged, so you can yeah. argue them and well, refine them more. I'm definitely a contrarian, and one of the things I really enjoyed was hanging out with people who were like of the far left. Mm. Like as I said, Catherine Devaney, who you might know, and if yes, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, she's yeah. somebody of the far left. And, you know, we're, age. She got she, sacked, and she she said she did. About, she said uh, she always mm, hangs shit on mm, the Anzacs every year. It's disgusting. You know, I don't. I hate her for political positions, but she dates somebody who I was friends with. You know, growing up. You know, like a, an old friend of mine when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. and you know, we, we, I'd been invited to some dinner parties. And as I said before, the Trump phenomena, I was I was always tolerated, and I even think she enjoyed arguing with me, to be honest. But yep. then it became a deplatforming thing. It's like you know, my ideas were linked to Trump suddenly, and suddenly it was like this was mm -hmm. taking off like a kind of juggernaut. And people were was like, Trump the problem? Was it? So Trump was the problem because he sat outside of the system when you had rhinos. Yeah, Republicans in name only. Yep. That was sort of okay. Bush yep. was sort of okay. He declared war on Iraq. It was sort of he stayed inside the system. But Trump, Trump, sorry, was so far outside of the system. Yes, that it's almost like no, that became the demarcation, didn't it? Yeah, I mean it was interesting because um, and he won. He was he won. He won. Yeah, I think that was when um, people on the left, at least within the arts community, I think felt nervous about my my ideas and stuff. And since they saw them coming to fruition, oh, the president of the United States, technically the most powerful man on the planet. That's when they thought, well, maybe. Maybe this politics he's been crapping on about for years is coming, be kind of re-emerging or whatever, you know, yeah. to some extent. And I mean, I mean, I would say that you know, I mean, certainly someone like Trump did represent at least some things I was interested in, and uh, it, I think it represented a kind of rise of what's called populist right, the yeah. populist yeah. right, yeah. things like yeah. this. Yeah. And um, you know, I think it was an interesting period politically, and obviously it was also Brexit too. Brexit happened at the same time. Mm. I think a lot of people yeah, on the left yeah. were kind of shocked by that. You know, well, Farage was one of his advisors, actually. No, Nigel Farage was one of his advisors. I'm so, a huge fan yeah, of Nigel yeah, Farage. Yeah. But it was about America first, wasn't it, for Trump? So it yeah. was like a, a repost to globalism in many respects. You know. Well, see, that's yeah. right. I mean, things that put you put the nation first, or that put the priorities of a people first, um, are, are definitely kind of anti-globalist. So. Um, and for whatever reason, the, what I would call the new left has thrown in its lot with um, yeah. with this kind of international thing, but which is big business ultimately. It, is, exactly, it is big business. And more hypocrisy, which is the concern. Isn't and the it? weird thing is, is that it's actually anti-working class. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yeah. And this yeah. is why I think that the working Which threatens their job security. The working class now belongs to the new right, you know, because, you know, the working class has been ignored by, you know, like the local people who are, who are I mean, like the people who are at the CFMNU, for example. But it's been happening for a long time, isn't it? Because it happened under Howard too, like he had his battlers, didn't he? He, he did. He had battlers as well, and he won them over as well, you know. Yep, yeah, he did. Yeah. And, and so, Pauline Hanson won a swathe of them before Howard did too. Well, Hanson was, you know, someone who really struck, you know, I mean, I was a fan of Pauline Hanson from the start, and obviously you know, I've gotten in trouble for that over the years, and, um, but... To me, she always represented, you know, middle Australia. You know mm. what I mean? Like mm. the the silent mm. majority and the mm. the audience for neighbours mm. in a lot mm. of senses. And um, you know, I I found I've always found that that body to be really interesting. Mm. And um, you know what? Um, you know, we uh, should support, you know. Um. But it's an interesting time. It's in real flux, isn't it? Because just at the start of the pandemic, I went and saw this guy who'd come out and was doing a speaking tour in, uh, 
who's an English guy and who's came out and he ended up speaking to an Australian. I was sitting in the foyer before I went in. Yes. Two women that were avowed feminists. Yes. And we're sitting there together waiting to go in. We started talking about Pauline Hanson. I was saying it's a real <laughs> worry when politically you begin to feel like you're aligned <laughs> with Pauline Hanson. Do you, do you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an amazing conversation yeah, because yeah. they had nowhere else left to turn. They felt the threat from yeah. the left. They were just starting to roll out the coronavirus and all the restrictions and the lockdowns, etc. Yeah. But they were talking about something else because something happened well and truly before that. Yeah, and yeah, you weren't yeah. allowed to speak. You know. Yeah, that's true. And it's extreme, you know, uh, ideology of uh, um, gender, and uh, yeah, I think it's been pretty destructive. So, um, you know, how did, how did you go from, um, you know, the freedom movement mm -hmm. to actually deciding to um, kind of run for the Senate? Pardon me. Well, you know, in some respects, it was like, uh, what do you do next? So mm -hmm. we've done, uh, there have been a lot of protests and there's yep. some really big ones towards the end of 2021. You were in Canberra, were you? Yeah, I went to Canberra as well. How was that? Uh, February the 12th was a really big, mm -hmm. uh, that was the one I was there for. There was a, mm -hmm. quite a big one the week before. And I think there was one again the following weekend. Yep. Um, I've got three kids. That, yeah. Um, you, know, um, you were limited to how you could get out. Yeah, I could stay for a certain mm -hmm. amount of time and I'd get back and be a parent as well, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, well, Camp was extraordinary. It was mm. huge. It was amazing because people. Camp kind of, Epic, you were there. Yeah, I went to Camp Epic. Yeah, I didn't stay, but yep. I went there and, and checked and, it out. Yeah, checked it out. Hung around mm. for a while. A friend was putting me up. Yep, nice. Um, yeah, we still. I was on. I was staying on a couch, you know, mm -hmm. doing that sort of stuff. Couch, couch surfing. surfing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been doing a bit of that in the freedom movement. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're in Canberra, but yeah, it was a, it was an extraordinary time to be there. But yep. at, at the same time, you know, we're there. And there's an amount of people amassing on all these parliaments throughout the country. Mm -hmm. And to what end? Yes. To what end? I felt, what mm. do you do next? I can't continue to mm. stand out the front of buildings with a megaphone and sort of basically yellow buildings, do you know what I mean? Yep. Asking for our freedoms, et yep. cetera. Um, so how does it manifest? Can it manifest itself politically? And the best way to do that, obviously, especially as a minor party, mm. was a minor, just as an individual, ultimately not a party at all, mm -hmm. is um, in the Senate. Yep. Potentially. Is that a place, yep. you know, a repository where we can have a voice so and you, people can come to that voice mm. and, and maybe you can change the culture to some extent from the front? I don't know that you can. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you can, but True. I'm willing to give it, give a, it go. a go. Yeah, and if you don't give it a go, you'll never find you'll never out. Find and when out it, yeah. Since I've started even just this momentum, get the ball rolling, it's yeah. amazing how many people have connected. Even some artists you wouldn't necessarily expect have yeah. sent me you know, private messages saying anything they can do mm -hmm. to help. This is their expertise. This is their skill set, and they would love to. Beautiful. And they're fully supportive of what you do. You know? yeah, I think of course, there's going to be a lot of people that aren't. The mainstream in general won't be. But let's mm -hmm. see. Let's test that at the ballot box. Because mm -hmm. what people have to say is, we've just discussed to keep their job mm. is different than what they might actually think when the privacy of their ballot box let's see what the, the see what they got to say. what the de democratic process decides yes it is it is i think it's been most disturbing the way under the covid and, and, and as i said it happened before covid it's not just that covid came out of nowhere the way that human liberties have been infringed and mm. the way that you know freedom of speech is infringed and you know i mean even freedom of thought which plays into kind of like a george orwellian mm. um you know kind of thought police well, you're frightened to speak that's yeah. the thing isn't it? And even since I've said, okay, now I'm going to run. So when I was on Cafe Locked Out, mm. I really didn't mind what I said. Yep. I thought, I don't care. As a matter of yeah. fact, this is so liberating. This is great. Where else can I, what else can I say yeah. that I really really think? think yeah. 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 Now, even since I'm running, I go, oh, hang on a minute. Should I start to question? And I can see how that, you know, yeah. and it makes a coward of you. It does, yeah. It makes a coward because political correctness is designed that way. It wants to make a coward of you. It's like there's a filter. You know what yeah, I mean? You know, and right. you have to yeah. kind of put things through a filter before you blurt them out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, even I have that to some slight extent. You don't <laughs> want to really see what's going on in my head. And no, uh, you know. no, I'm glad you've got. It. I suppose the filter's important to some extent, isn't it? That's but not, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's not. I think the important thing, and Jordan Peterson puts it in an interesting way, is he said that you know you should just you know really think about what you say and be precise. And I think mm. one of the reasons he's been so successful. Um, you know, uh, it's because, you know, people say, oh, are you anti-trans? He's well, I'm not anti-trans, but I'm anti the fact that I must say these things, you know, and I, then he takes it to a kind of other intellectual level about forced speech, mm. and uh, which is actually a much more fundamental issue, yeah. Yeah. you know, like, you know, you can't force people to um, say certain things or think certain things. Once you try to do that, you've crossed the line. Yeah, well, gender's dysphoria is such a small minority of the population, isn't it? It and, is, and it is. suddenly it's everything. I know, and it's that, that's the question they'll ask you when they're looking for a gotcha moment. Yeah. 
but you can't argue for the greater majority of the population yeah because yeah. you become homophobic or whatever else it is Correct. you're supposed to be and that's what that's that's the problem with it yeah and it's designed that way it's it designed is. to catch you out it is you know in, in, in a moral untruth ultimately. exactly and i mean you and i if grew you up... can't stand up to it richard yeah. if no one ever stands up to it then it's just going to run away from all of us and we're all going to suffer as a consequence of it true and it does work as a kind of um kind of bullying like yeah. a battering ram for other agendas that are yeah. far more marxian yeah. or far more yeah. um totalitarian you know i mean you know, one of the things i've always said about um cancel culture and that we should be rejected is that it would lead to totalitarianism i've been saying that for 10 years and then it kind of did lead to totalitarianism yeah. Yeah. over the last two years i mean obviously we're seeing it fade to a certain extent now but we still have mandates is it fading? And, well is that's it right exactly it's, so it's being generous. dialed back as david thrussell would say yeah being dialed back but are yeah. they just going to turn it up again there's all these boosters so that's yeah. the people i want to talk to now not just those people clearly that didn't want to take the vaccine in the first place because a lot of people have had the first two shots maybe even a third one and they're saying hang on how many boosters do i have to have yeah but it's still not necessarily working mm -hmm. what choices do i have around that well i would make an appeal to those people i agree i yeah. would really make an appeal to those people i think that's a good point the time is now. yeah absolutely because you know a lot of people i know a lot of people who've had the two shots but they're not keen on the third mm. and particularly they don't want it mandated you know what i mean because they feel they've done their bit well the system's been co-opted co yeah. by it yeah it's just got this narrative now and it has yeah. to play it out it yeah. can't pull itself back if it's a new world order or if they just cross the rubicon and they can't come back from yeah. it now but they still have to be held to account yeah. it just goes roll on now oh look at the ukraine we're lucky we're not at war who cares <laughs> you couldn't go outside for a few days yeah no i care people yeah. do care people really 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 care and they mm. need to be held to account and that's why I'm running for parliament, hopefully to try and hold someone to account. What's this decision-making process? Because it didn't just happen with COVID. No. It won't just go away and not appear somewhere else because the bureaucracy is so big and ever growing. It and is. no one makes an argument against it anymore. Who makes an argument against it, you know? I know, and it's like, you know, as I said, if it's not kind of like brought up, I mean, you, you, you see the occasional brave um, politician, there's a couple of rebels within the Liberal Party and there's some independents, yep. um, yep. both at state and federal mm -hmm. levels. Mm -hmm. There's obviously Pauline Hanson and, yep. and a few groups like that, yep. you know, um, you know, who, who stood up. Yeah, Alex like, Antich, there's a few of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. but not enough. George Christensen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. not yep. enough. And, um, you know... No, well, I've counted, and there's about seven out of 227 federal parliamentarians, there's seven that are openly out against yeah. this agenda extraordinary yeah, isn't it? you're you know? against the mandates at least yeah i know and i mean all, all these restrictions would never have been able, never been possible without this mm. COVID crisis mm. which again leads to you know um kind of i mean investigations of like, what was the origin of this virus you know i mean well this is things so, yeah. no, so morrison put that on the table that yeah. clearly threatened someone i imagine someone in china got threatened and mm. maybe that was sponsored by american money yeah that gain of function that was happening in research that, yeah. in wuhan That's been but if yeah. they, someone put a finger on morrison because he just stopped talking about it yeah so they stopped trading with us except iron ore was still fine but they wouldn't yeah. take anything else yeah yeah very weird yeah isn't it? and you can't talk about it but yeah. if you can't talk about it can we talk about the reasons why you can't talk about it yeah again? i know like, and that's what i'd be quite comfortable to do yeah in the senate i would imagine mm. or maybe you do get co-opted you walk in there and you get co-opted mm, it's true and i mean the interesting thing too is like um the way that like this agenda um has been um how would you describe it um you know, like it's destroyed so many people's lives. Yeah. Like, you know, we all say, I mean, we don't, it's, it's hard to say how many people are protected, but we know so many people whose businesses have gone under, who've lost their job, or for whatever reason, they might not have wanted the vaccine, or maybe they just, the company went under, even if they took the vaccine in the sense that no one could attend their businesses. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, would you like to address that? Well, there's a spate of heart attacks now too that yeah. I want to talk about. Now, I can't say that, that mm. I don't know what the uh, correlation of those are, mm -hmm. but, I yeah. don't know what the correlation is, but I know what the causation of it is. Exactly. But I would be interested in finding out, finding out, or yeah. talking about it, or at least saying it's possible. It you is, know. and it is. I mean, wouldn't we like to know if there was something? I mean, we don't know. I mean, the, the exact long-term effects of these vaccines, and I guess we're heading into the area of like, you know, there's the short-term effects which happen within six yeah, months. But I think we do too, mm. because uh, Pfizer's just released a sack of document. What was that? Yes, Tell us which about says, that. well, there was over. 40,000 adverse reactions in the first three months of it rolling out in America that they knew because it's their documentation. Yeah. And there's 1,223 deaths directly, you know, attributable yeah. to the vaccination rollout, mm -hmm. which they knew about. Yeah, which is so safe, apparently. Well, it's criminal. Yeah, it is. It's actually criminal. Criminal negligence. It's yeah. totally criminal. 
Yeah, I mean, this happened obviously. And so who else know? Did Australian officials know anything? It's about medical that? malpractice. It's yeah, not as if there yeah. are no um, what you call templates for medical malpractice. I mean, the his, yeah. medical history is littered yeah, with yeah. medical malpractice. And well, the Pfizer's some... had the biggest fine ever for for such yeah. malpractice. So, and then we've got drugs so like thalidomide that were safe of course, for a long safe. time. Yeah. Which Cigarettes caused... were safe for a long time. Exactly. Cocaine Good and Coca-Cola was safe for a long time. Yeah. So, you know, these things... These Ecstasy medical... was developed as a drug to bring couples back together, wasn't That's it? That's right. It was a kind mean, of... Um, yeah. Where do we... Where Make does it end? Good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, it's extraordinary, isn't it? So, there, there's long... And hold on to your bodily autonomy suddenly makes you what? An anti-vaxxer or... I know. I mean, it's extraordinary. And it, it, again, go back you to You become some... a pariah of the society. And I was saying to you, I was driving here. Yeah. I had it on Triple N. I was listening to a song. And then the pr- announcer came on and said, Oh, my God, there's some road you couldn't get through. And why? Of course, mm. it's a protest. I don't know what the protest was. Mm. But you could hear the tiredness in his voice. Because mm-hmm. you just want to know. People don't want to know about it anymore. No. And that's the danger. They just want to get on with it. I just want to stay blinking and I don't want to know about it. Yeah. But I do want to know about it. Yeah. And it's a really philosophical thing to do when you run for government because when you start to realise, hang on, what are you saying? Because yeah. words have meanings and you know they'll come after you if your words don't make any sense. It's true. So you've got to start to really ask yourself those questions. It's quite a philosophical proposition on how best to organise a culture and a society should conduct itself. Well, and, and politically. You won't get any argument from me. I'm, uh, you know, I have a degree in philosophy. Obviously, I've been interested. I've got a house full of books and movies and things that deal with philosophical topics because uh, to me, things like philosophy, they inform our decisions, they inform our politics and stuff and that we have to think about these things at that level well someone has to yeah, exactly Maybe not everyone has to yeah. but someone has someone to. has to yeah. yeah yeah i know and there's been a definite lack of that you know and we're always presented with you know we're always presented of, you know, i guess a kind of interesting kind of way of putting it is like dumb and dumber you know what i mean yeah, we're, we're yeah, presented yeah, with with yeah. someone who we don't really like yeah. And then someone we don't like even more, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and so, well, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. side of politics you are, you go, yeah. well, I'd prefer the one who's just dumb, yeah. not the one who's even dumber than yeah. that, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, sure. like, and yeah. that, that sadly, you know, is, is what we've been presented with. You know? so, like debate. So it's, it's like bad bourgeois, and worse. Bourgeois you know? in Australia is too yeah. easy to get by. Is that what it is? I don't know. Well, you know? That, that probably speaks to a broader issue, but like, um, yeah, it definitely has something to do. Uh, with a level of comfort and um, you know but the thing is is what we don't understand I think is that we, because we do have such at least uh, at some level we have pretty functioning societies that mm. do pretty mm. well I mean they talk about things like the environment and stuff um, you know I mean Jordan Peterson has made this point that a developed country a developed first world country pollutes like way a lot less than third world countries mm. but people just throw litter yeah, everywhere yeah, the yeah. rivers are full of mm. you know mm. I mean that's one of the things that you know whenever you but travel the old Soviet Union the old Soviet Union yeah. Extraordinary amount of pollution. Extraordinary. Of the in Russia. Environment. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, Putin hasn't got a good green record, you know what I mean? Like, I mean. It, but he left over. That was inheritance, wasn't he it? He wasn't inherited it, yeah. I mean, infrastructure was Soviet infrastructure. You can't just change yeah, that. Over the radical now. left has yeah. a terrible history yeah. of, um, you know, with communism. Yeah. Um, with, you know, they so hardly... if you can't defend Western civilization somewhere in the line, where are you heading to? Where are you heading? Is that what yeah. you're heading to? Yeah. I mean, that raises an interesting point, Damo, too. Like, um, you know, I mean, where do you, how do you feel about that, like, Western civilization? Do you feel yourself as a defender of it or, and the values and kind of the European ideals that are, um, you know, I guess enshrined in, in countries like Australia and obviously also other Commonwealth countries like Canada and stuff, like, at least, you know, at a kind of mm. level of, um, you know... Well, I feel like we haven't been willing to make the argument for it. And mm. that's what I woke up to, not knowing mm. enough about it myself. And, and I still don't. But mm. now the, the investigation continues. Yes. Um, and it begins in many respects, you know. But if we wouldn't make the argument for it, yeah. And we wouldn't make the argument for it because it was humiliating to make the argument for it, especially as a white Western male. You yes. weren't allowed to make the argument for it. But that was something that was done to us by the institutions. We were co-opted. I got that when I went to university, went to Flinders University and studied yeah. drama and politics, particularly in the drama stream, more than the politics stream. Really? Yeah. That you wouldn't make any defence. And that was 1987. Yeah, it's so been it's coming been, for and, a while, this, hasn't it? Well, it was happening before I got yeah. there. Yeah. So I thought, well, if no one makes the argument, and I thought, well, and eventually I looked at the liberal side of politics and thought, well, that's the side that would really make yeah, this yeah. argument, but they certainly don't want to make the argument. Yeah. So what chance does it have? Yeah. But why, did, why is it such a se- successful country that immigrants want to come to? Yes. Isn't that because of that? So can't you make the argument to those people? They yeah. don't going to consider it racist. It's just a small cabal that consider it racist to make those arguments, but they're mm. the people that control the institutions, obviously control grants mm. and funding and control the money, control the flow of money. I know. So you have to have these ideas even if you don't practice them. You Ex- just have to give lip service to Absolutely. them. Absolutely. But what price do you pay for giving lip service to them? You don't pay no price at all. You yeah. do pay a price. And isn't it interesting Spiritually. too, many of these woke people, you know, 
they don't realise they exist within this very European framework mm. and like the very ideas that they promote even have a history within yeah. like European culture or whatever what you call the new left has ideas in, in like Western thinkers like Michel Foucault and Jacques yeah, Derrida yes. yeah, or yeah. French yeah, intellectuals yeah. and yes, yes. you know I mean you know these are yeah. European Marxists yeah. and they're all very anti-family Foucault yeah. in particular yeah. really anti-family absolutely you know? yeah, yeah. but I mean, of course he was as a gay male he felt he's, exactly. he felt ostracised by that established Died system of AIDS, yep. but oh, okay there you go mm -hmm. but of course he did, him, yeah. but, but he doesn't become the paragon of virtue to talk about how no. we should organise as ourselves in yeah, the culture no. but we've allowed him to do that he died in his we've, late 50s uh, that, yeah. Yeah. yeah so like you know is, does this lifestyle lead to an unhealthy uh, you know kind of lifestyle choice that's interesting to think about but um, and rather than left and right too yeah. I say now the argument needs to be about big state versus uh, a smaller yeah. state what role mm -hmm. does government need to play what's a reasonable size for government to be that was a question I was going to ask you where do you see yourself uh, along the political spectrum I mean uh, do you consider yourself right wing left or kind of synthesis well that's what I just argued yeah, really. yeah. I suppose I just said you know yeah. what I mean it's like I'm very concerned about the deep state I'm yeah. really concerned about the deep state and so you believe there's non one in Australia NGOs non-government organisations mm -hmm. yeah because it's huge it's massive the UN the WEF the WHO the list goes on yeah, all yeah. these um you know, uh, climate ventures that we have to be part of, have yep. to sign up to, to be mm -hmm. considered, an, you know, an okay member of the international community. community yeah. We can't look after ourselves anymore. And that reminds me, like, the family's not allowed to look after itself anymore either. There's no. been a real attack on that. Huge. And there's been a, there's an attack on the nation state. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, champion. I'm a champion of the nation state. Yes, That's yes. what I've come to realise. I've had to ask myself the questions. Mm -hmm. I'm a champion of the nation state. Not to say that we aren't an international yep. or a global citizen. Mm -hmm. Of course. We are. So it's both. You, you, you need necessarily... Um, you know, obviously, I mean, every nation has a place on the international stage, so to speak. But it's interesting, too, the freedom movement. You see a tremendous amount of flags and, you know, a tremendous amount of what you call old Aussies, mm -hmm. you know, who are part of these protests. Yeah. I mean, would you consider yourself a nationalist? What does that mean? What do you mean by well, that? A nationalist is somebody who, you know, I guess it's, it is certainly something along the lines of what you've been saying. It's somebody who, you know, is is interested in Australia first. You yeah, know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it used to be something that all politicians mm. would be, of course I'm Australia yeah, first. I can pay whatever but now it's like almost, I want to yeah. Ukraine. I don't yeah. really know what's happening in Ukraine right now. It's a complex area, Situation. as all areas are. There's deep historical reasons why situations are as they are yeah, of, course. of course but i don't know enough about it i'm not going to mm -hmm. pretend i know enough about it i live in australia i know more what's happening to me in my immediate vicinity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what i'm interested in yeah but yeah. somehow i have to i have to be interested in external issues all the time to yeah. be good yes or whole or moral uh, i know i mean to be in media ultimately because absolutely. you have to do that to be in media and isn't it interesting too, like there, it's not as if Ukraine is the only war that's been going on, there's been yeah. one raging in Yemen yeah. for a long time, which, which is actually, the military has been funded, it's basically been Saudi Arabia attacking Yemen, and there's some other internationalist kind of interests that have been attacking it, but like there's been literally almost no uh, reportage of that. And obviously then there's also like the, you know, Israel and Palestine conflict where Israel mm. is constantly taking Palestinian land and mm. is bombing people in the uh, in the territories there. And again, that's silenced almost, you know. I mean, you do see the reports. What's the, what's the real politic <clears throat> though of what's happening in Ukraine too, to some extent? Like, Russia is the biggest player and that mm. Russia dominates Europe. That threat of Russia has always dominated Europe. The threat of it, yeah. if nothing else. Now... I grew up in the Cold War, as I imagine you did too, and yeah. Russia had a sphere of influence that it expected to maintain yeah. from independent from NATO, which is a threat to it. Now, if NATO were going to come into the Ukraine of course. on its doorstep, it's going to be the same as the Cuban Missile Crisis in the 60s. Exactly. And the right. Russians deploying missiles yeah. facing Florida. Well, yeah. and I would understand that Americans would be concerned with that, rightly concerned about that eventuation. Well, of wouldn't the Russians be similarly concerned about NATO amassing? Yeah. Uh, well, can you imagine if Russia wanted in, to, and somehow, if, yeah, <laughs> if, if, if somehow Russia was uh, allied with Mexico or Canada or something, and yes. decides, oh, I'm just going to set up all these nukes along the uh, U.S. border, are you okay with that? You know what I mean? Of course the U.S. No. would not be okay with that. And so this is why it's provoked the situation. And there's this pretense yeah. of not wanting to play power. Power is a terrible thing, it's a horrible yeah. thing with the left side, except they use that to actually gain power. Yeah, but yeah. the reality is power is true. There is power in the world. There is a yeah, source yeah. of power. America is the ultimate source of power still at the yeah, moment. It's the and major being, world power. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's under, under challenge. Before, absolutely, but, and always will be under challenge mm. because power is always going to be under challenge. <laughs> exactly. Look at the role of prime minister. That's, That's meant true. to be the most powerful person in the country. It's always under challenge, and it yeah. always will be under challenge. Yeah, yeah.
Exactly. And I mean, you know, the situation in Ukraine too, like, um, you know, it's just far more complex than our media wishes to um, discuss it. And isn't it interesting, did you not see that episode of Q&A? Obviously, I don't watch it, but you see clips occasionally that get shared on social media, where somebody who basically had a more pro-Russian yeah. position, he just got kicked off the air yeah, by that, Stan that idiot yeah. Stan Grant. Mm. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, mm. can't we hear the ideas of... And what happened? Well, that happened a lot time, a long time later too. Yeah, and he was a he was a, of Russian descent. Yeah, he was just making a reasonable argument for yeah. Russia. He wasn't, and 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 Stan said, well, he'd been, you know, he's uh, expressing a desire for violence, and therefore had to leave the studio. No, now you've got to get out now, please. No, yeah, please leave, leave now. Get out. What a show! I know. What a show! And the ratings of <laughs> show of virtue. Oh and the, God, and the God, ratings have please. gone through the floor, and people also don't recognize the ratings have gone through the floor a long time before that. Yeah, and then you start to wonder why these shows still exist. But do they exist just as a propaganda yeah. arm of the state? And if you look so, you at, can reference it. Yeah, and if you look at the basic, as some source of truth. Absolutely, Sorry, mate, but it's you know, yeah. But no one That's watches true. it because everyone already knows Absolutely. it's not true. But because it exists, yeah. it becomes a repository of truth somewhere Absolutely. down the line. The ABC yeah. used to, at least the ABC I grew up with, it used to be a show that would welcome, uh, at least to some extent, differing mm. opinions. Mm. And there were discussion shows in our day. And many of them were quite, um, you know, the, the discussion was quite broad. You would even have people from communist Russia on who would state the Soviet position or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, uh, there's just no desire for broad debate. And the idea that is promoting violence, couldn't that argument be made of people who are on the Ukrainian side? I mean, really, I mean, does anyone really think Russia, sorry, Ukraine is going to defeat Russia? I mean, you yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah. so the people promoting violence are the idiots mm. online who mm. are promoting the Ukrainian cause. I mean, shouldn't, the first thing that should be done is a surrender and to work out a kind of peace that suits both sides. Isn't I mean, I'm sure Putin... Isn't, weren't they saying there's some fascist influence in the Ukrainian Absolutely. forces too? I don't know much I about know the that, situation so. there. It's, right. uh, there's a group called Avos and Red Sector, yeah. and these are Ukrainian neo Nazis and um, so we're neo Nazis at home on a domestic level, so you don't want anything to do with us. Yeah, but yeah. on an international level, the neo Nazis are okay. The hilarious thing is that, like the new left, uh, even the Guardian newspaper, which is the, the bastion of the new left, mm. they called these groups that are now fighting Russia, and these are the ones giving Russia a hard time because they're radical, militarized um, neo Nazis. You obviously have grievances with Russia that date back to um, you know communism and the Holodomor. Exactly. <laughs> you go to Holodomor. Yeah, go on Holodomor. <laughs> I love it when you go there. <laughs> So, you know, these yeah. grievances and... Uh, Which was the famine, we should mention. The, left, the Ukrainian famine that yeah. killed millions, more than in the, the Holocaust. Yeah, like exactly. 11 million or something 12 like that? Million. 12 million. Yeah, okay. Twice the amount of Holocaust. And yeah. there's been no yeah. movies on that I know no, of. Right? That no, no, a, no. It's that's a very, not every... un, very unsung part of history. Yeah, it's not like it's there's a documentary the every weekend on SBS. Like well, that's right. And it only happened like 10 years hence, too. So it's not like it was... It happened just before. It was. It preceded, you know. That's right. It preceded, you know. And it's very interesting... Uh, and obviously that's why there is within Ukraine uh, a kind of hostility towards Russia because it's historical. And I believe... Yeah, I there's not too. Because mm -hmm. they call Ukrainians apparently, it's colloquial, I believe, and I don't know enough about it, I'm not yeah. going to offend people by saying it's Rossini. Yeah. Which means little Russians. Yeah. So there's a great tie. That yeah, of course. Anyway, from being in that. They're used to living next to each other. It shows the limitations of power too, doesn't it? Because yeah. you see that the Russians in the Ukraine might be as effective as what you'd think the Russian army would be. But of course, if you're a Russian here, we want, I mean, you're an Australian, mm -hmm. go and invade New Zealand. Yeah, what? Yeah, exactly. My I know. brothers in New Zealand, what, how hard are you really going to go Going to fight, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and also the limitations of sort of military power. And I know that... Because unless you have a reason to fight, yeah. which is really to keep the country, yeah. the actual ground you fight, and we yeah. see that all the time. You know, we saw it in Vietnam as a classic example of it, where the might of the Americans was yeah. defeated by just a determined I people, know. but had nowhere else to go, no other option but to fight to the death. It's extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, I've been to Vietnam and toured the, uh, Me too. the what's it called, the holes in the ground and stuff, and the like, you know, tunnels. Those little yeah. uh, Viet Cong, mate. How'd you get through, mate? How'd you get no, through? I didn't get yeah. through. I, didn't, I mean, I, had, I mean, I, I went through some of the small some earth moving equipment. You know, I didn't do that. <laughs> But like, um, we've got to know. get him out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I a couple mean, of weeks later, you get out, and you would be slimmed down, mate. Yeah, slide right. out, that's yeah. it. slide straight out. It was, it was a couple of week wait. I had a few issues. I thought, oh, I am going to. My son was just sliding through. Oh no, I only uh, went through ones that are wider. Obviously, yeah. I wouldn't be getting through the little ones. Mm. But like, what this this seeing them now makes you realise the determination of the Vietnamese people. And well, you that's know, when you confront it with yeah. no other alternative. Yeah, exactly. there's no alternative yeah. to fight because you're fighting actually for the, your existence. And I don't think anyone's ever going to invade Vietnam ever mm. again after that. You know what yeah. I mean? because it's like that, that little group of people 
just defeated the greatest army on earth. And I mean, yeah. it's clear the Vietnamese people, and I love going to their, um, what's it called, museums, because it, it's, it's, it's all such propaganda. It's all from yeah. the yeah. Vietnamese yeah. perspective, yeah. which is like yeah. Western imperialist yeah. villains yeah. and like under the control of like but the because it's international too, bankers. Because it's communist, it doesn't take any pretense to take in that account <laughs> of the other side, whereas the, <laughs> the West would traditionally <laughs> sort of make a pretense at least of taking yeah. into account yeah. how the other side might have felt, you know. But, oh, I but, love going to And that's gone. That's gone from the West. That's gone from us. That ability, that self reflection and ability I think is gone and I think that's that's cause for some concern yeah I think you should always take in the uh, the others kind of perspective and that's just how you achieve it I've always been introduced interested in dialectical thought which is taking two positions and trying to find a middle ground and that's obviously what needs to be done you know, obviously the Ukrainians in the West uh, uh, have an opinion and, and Russia has an opinion and you could probably reach her but you know uh, what's interesting too which I think you go to Vietnam I went to Vietnam too and it's yeah. like the Vietnamese don't even care about the Americans they even like the Americans now and of I'm course. sure there's yeah. some um, <laughs> resentment but Really, yeah. who they who concerns them is their big neighbour right China. next door, China. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> they could annex them. China could like probably yeah. easily annex. Uh, yeah. But I imagine the Viet Cong yeah. next generation might, you know, so they might even give Chinese pause because they saw what happened to America. I mean, this is the thing: great powers can move slowly when you have a, a um, what you call a fired-up resistance. And I think maybe if, if if Putin is being slowed at all, it is because there has some, been some animosity between Russia and Ukraine. And that there is a fired up resistance, you know what I mean? And that slows slows anybody down. Well, their backs are going to be to the wall, aren't they? Yeah, Their backs are to the wall. Yeah. So, well, exactly. There's nowhere else to go. So, it's a disastrous situation, and unfortunately... And is that the thing for Australians? Not Like, we're not, we're not confronting that, but we're confronting some change to the culture. And I know a lot of people I know in the freedom movement, the yep. East Europeans, etc. And they're getting out. They're going to go back to the country that they fled from yep. to come here for freedom. Extraordinary, so, isn't it? But I've got nowhere to go. Well, yeah, there's right. nowhere to go. I can't go back to Scotland or Ireland or wherever it's going to be. <laughs> I don't think, can we can we go back yeah. there and claim yeah, we come back with yeah. the traditional landowners? Well, there's that. There's well, can that. we try the traditional landowners yeah. routine? But um, you yeah, know, I don't think that would work. Obviously, my my ancestors are from Manchester. Around Manchester, I don't think so I'm going to get any land if I go back there. Well, that's a reason to run too for me in a way too. If you don't stand here and fight, then what? Yeah, no. Do you know what do you do instead? You know, mm -hmm. it's all right to stand outside and mm -hmm. and comment and complain. But there is, the, you know, the affairs of state are really uh, complex, difficult things to have to try and undertake. So mm. it would be interesting to, to try and undertake them. Indeed. Mm. So, Damo, uh, mm. tell us, um, what are some of the policies you're running on? You know, you had one about keep the cash. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I think there's this uh, really big push. And again, I think it's a global push to mm -hmm. move us to a digital currency. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's a real threat to our independence mm -hmm. as human beings, our Agreed. autonomy. And the best way to manage that, the only way I could see conceivably manage is to, to make the sanctity, of, the argument for the sanctity of cash. Yeah. They will have money. And as I said in the policy launch I did, is it, it, it's just a theory, a bureaucratic theory that you take all cash out of a system anyway. Because if mm. you take it all out, the black market will take care of it. Yep. Something will be developed. Yep. That, the bureaucrats will probably end up using yeah. themselves as well, but then giving <laughs> lip service to this other great idea, yeah, this yeah. utopian idea that they've come up with and how yeah. wonderful it is. But yeah. give me some of that moolah, will you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But then what safeguards and protections will there be? There might be some for those people because there's someone to be yeah. feared in this new system but for you know pensioners and mm -hmm. you know what, what safeguards will there be for them uh, well, I, I don't know but if you can keep the value of the currency will yes. be the difficulty That's keeping it. the value of the currency I mean it does seem... as we've seen so but even with the floods and stuff and people suddenly didn't have access so mm -hmm. suddenly the, the electricity was turned off it's pretty yeah. simple really yeah. and the digital currency is actually worth nothing now because yeah. you can't yeah. get at it of course but if you've still got physical cash you can buy things like that and yeah. some people can resort of course to having gold or silver yeah, but who can but afford who can? to do that? And why should you have to why exactly should you have to i know and who wants to center on like trading like little ingots of gold everywhere exactly you go? Right. it's yeah. crazy yeah and i mean yeah it seems like cash i mean you know, it, obviously it's not a perfect system but it, it's certainly a pain that we're used to and uh and the thing that i think i find most disturbing is the way that you know for example we saw this with the, the truckies um uh, you know the way they can switch it off yeah you know, they can just you know if you do something the government likes and if it's all digital you have no other resource there's no other kind of currency you can go to no. maybe you can go to some other cryptocurrency possibly yeah, well, we hear these people devolving yeah. from the system and they're bartering and trading etc yeah. is that is that a world that i know we, do we want to go back to almost like pre-industrial was yeah. <laughs> well, that where we're headed yeah that's the real concerns mm -hmm. really serious concerns yeah. and can that have a voice in the 
parliament without being mocked or yeah. ridiculed because it's easy to ridicule those concepts but there's yeah very, i think there's a very real danger that we could be sliding into a, a, a potentially a new dark age i think so and i think it's I, I think it's disturbing the way these things are kind of they're always promoted as like that's this is the next stage in look progress at look at the debt yeah. the world is carrying i don't debt. know and inflation trillions, trillions of inflation which is seen kicking in now like what yeah. i mean how's the petrol i had to think about coming here you know what i mean yeah yeah <laughs> how much is this then? gonna cost me yeah. yeah exactly how's my bank account yeah, your bank account. yeah. i know it's yeah. incredible as i said no one to drop the excise on fuel no yeah maybe that's a good thing to do maybe what they corollary need does that have what flow off on fix will that have i know i know it's extraordinary isn't it and uh, and it seems to be all an attack upon the average citizen i mean it's the same with a lot of this net zero um stuff you know i mean it almost seems like the petrol price is related more to net zero than anything going on in the Ukraine. So mm. It's like they, they want to make it so well, that... I talked to Matt Canavan and he talked about net zero too. And, he said, yeah. and I talked about uh, Morrison capitulating to net zero. And he said, well, it was, you know, sort of like a strategically clever thing to do because you give lip service to it. You get those yeah. people off your back. Yeah. And really what will happen will happen anyway. What's really yeah. going to happen by 2050? Morrison won't even be around anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand yeah. that being a clever position, a clever proposition, but is it a moral proposition? Yeah. Is it left then for someone else to have to make the argument? Just keep yeah. kicking the can down the road. Yeah, yeah, Everyone's yeah. kicking the can down the road. And that's what they're doing with the debt too, of isn't course. it? It feels yeah. to me like yeah. Yeah. they're just kicking the can down the road. Mm. So someone else is left holding the baby when the music stops. You know? mm -hmm. No, I guess and I guess what we, I guess what everyone fears is that eventually, the, you know, I mean, we, we've come close with these crashes with the global financial crisis, but, you know, that will reach a kind of almost terminal one where the kind of Western civilization yeah. kind of like runs out of, yeah. you know, that's right. you know yeah. gas, both literally yeah. and uh, and metaphorically. You know, it's uh, happened before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, as we see, there are power players in the world that are, uh, you know, not, you know, not everybody is nice, so to speak, you know, and there are, pe there are people who clearly are enemies of Western civilization. Maybe nobody's nice. Yeah, that's, that's right. Maybe we're not nice and neither are they. Would... <laughs> I think that's possibly true, yeah. <laughs> Self-interest is a great motivator. I think Paul Keating said that, didn't he? You he know? did. Self-interest is a great motivator. And you can't say that the new left is not interested in self-interest mm. because, you know, they're all very good for the free speech of people who agree with them. Mm. They're just not into the free speech of mm. people who don't. Yeah. You know, which is, yeah. again, if you don't agree... I mean, you know, as I said, I'm somebody of the right, but I always listen to left wingers because I find it interesting, particularly mm. ones who are a bit articulate or whatever, mm. you know, and some of them have come over to what I would call our side or whatever, people like Russell Brand, um, that Grin. He's really interesting to see. Isn't yeah. it? He Glenn. went from writing a book. Yeah. Basically, it was an old tome to yeah. uh, a revolution, yeah. Marxist revolution. Marxist revolution. Not so long ago, Not really. so long ago, Published. 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah, and now he's arguing really from a he totally speaks, different he's, perspective. He's yeah. practically Alex so Jones. That's hope. So there you go. So maybe yeah. that's the hope. Maybe that's why it's important yeah. to make these arguments and yeah. bring these arguments because he's making them. So Even someone they, like yeah. Julian Assange, who was like somebody who was definitely yeah. of the old left, who was probably a Marxist or at least a, maybe an anarchist, um, you know, like uh, essentially when he attacked Hillary Clinton, people accused him of supporting Donald Trump. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm sure he's not the world's hugest fan of Donald Trump, but why would he, you know, do something that could technically help him? Yes, Assange has uh, technically always been, I've heard, as a, quite a left winger, actually. I agree, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and he would yeah. say that himself, I think, yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, he was a darling of the left until yeah. he did something that, you know, may possibly supported Donald Trump, or at least considered Trump a lesser evil yeah. than Hillary Clinton. You yeah. know, it's extraordinary yeah. the yeah. kind of political kind of flip But it's so important, the propaganda is so important, isn't yeah. it? Because there's someone like him who's really putting himself, whatever you think of him, yeah. wow, he's put himself on the line. Yeah. Right? But you're, everyone's allowed to have an opinion. Yeah. Everyone sits comfortably in their existence and has an opinion on what he's done. Yeah. And they're the people ultimately that vote. So yeah. it's the propaganda Correct. is what really wins the day. Yes. And now we see that more than ever, the propaganda of the machinery. Absolutely. Of state. Oh, it's just everywhere. next level. So and you can't even have fifty or 60,000 people at a protest. There's mm. only maybe 7,000. According yeah. to... They the, lie uh, about the yeah, figures. Why the do AFP, they lie? you know, yeah. commissioner, chief Why commissioner. Why do they lie? Because yeah. yeah. they have to lie to keep their job, like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. They know they have to lie. No one taps them and needs, needs necessarily tell them. Yeah. They're just keeping the narrative up. Well, I remember I was at the Ballarat protest and I was actually, it was really weird you because I was there and uh, um, I was walking down the street and it said that the people in the protest were hassling shop owners. And now I'm in the protest. Mm. There was no one hassling shop owners. Yep. No one. Mm. The whole march, no one did no. that. They walked down, maybe they waved a flag. Is that mm. hassling? I don't know. Mm. But it was weird to see the lie on my phone and to be standing in the actual mm. thing they're reporting well, on. Well, apparently they were told. To and it was weird too because they were saying this at the time. They, there, was, there was no time. It was like... Mm. How could they be reporting? Mm. If, even if that was happening, there would need to be an hour or two mm. 
for it to be reported. Yeah. It was like already reported. It was already reported, yeah. That something that wasn't happening mm -hmm. was happening. Mm -hmm. It was just a real mm -hmm. penny dropping. Like the lies were already yeah. in place. They're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. ready to go. They're ready to, to, to smear you yeah. and besmirch you. That must have been yeah. written a couple of hours before yeah. the. But apparently they began. were told, the shop owners were told to close. Yeah. Yeah, extraordinary. Because under threat of the coronavirus, all these unvaccinated people coming to spread this, you know, be super spreaders and I know, you know, I know. kill everyone in that community, even though it was clear that people weren't really dying in large numbers from that virus yeah. by that stage anyway. No, it, it gets to the whole point of corruption. And I wanted to raise this with you, like, you know, kind of keep the bastards honest. That used mm. to be something that mm. used to be part of kind of politics. And that was Don Chip when yeah. he started the Democrats. Chippy, yeah. 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 77, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. Good old days, Yeah, mate. good old days. Yeah, yeah, he was a former Liberal minister. Yeah. Yeah. I love the 70s. I remember yeah. the decade, <laughs> Oh, wow. cheers, cheers, cheers on that. Cheers on the 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, that's our favourite. Yeah, we from zero to ten. And we were pretty young. We were 70s. pretty young, yeah, but yeah. we're just looking up going, yeah, this is yeah. cool. But yeah, no, I remember that. Keep the bastards honest, mm -hmm. you know. And they uh, they were like uh, the third force in Australian politics, and you can see what happens. And then Meg Lees yeah. did that deal with Howard on the GST and that killed the party. That yeah. destroyed the party overnight. It went from being like having a 30 year heritage yeah. To, yeah. To, to nothing, to erupt and then it's just sort of disappeared. And under this whole COVID thing, there's been, there seems to have been an extraordinary level of um, uh, what you call complicity corruption or working hand in hand with big pharmaceutical companies and stuff that normally the media would investigate things like that. You're like, oh, hang on, is there something dodgy going on here yeah. with politicians and a big pharma? Mm. They would investigate. But it's like that, even the discussion of that is banned. The alternative media is left to investigate. Yeah, we're yeah. left yeah. to. Yeah. And we're left to be disparaged. <laughs> exactly. By the ABC or 7, 9, 10, whatever. Or, yeah. I know. Yeah. Uh, did yeah. you see the ad that yeah. was on the ABC? It was like an ad for... Um, it was like a bunch of celebrities, you know, like many of them actors. I don't want to, you know, but yeah. like, well, like well, the same actors that are, yeah. uh, you know, in a COVID many of your contemporaries are getting yeah. up, to being on a, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what they were saying was is... Um, Pretending to have COVID. There was an ad saying um, in lockdown, because everyone had a lot of spare time, mm. many people started um, blogs and stuff. I mean, a cafe lockdown was, I guess, one of them. Yep. Yep. But like, um, they were saying, whatever you do, don't do that. <laughs> they did a special ad saying, don't create your own... And it was right. weird because the ABC would normally... Mm -hmm. Support the arts or support people with independent voices, but they yeah. literally That's got the a pretense. bunch. Yeah, the pretense. That's the pretense. They got yeah. a bunch of celebrities together to say, mm. "Don't do that." I, I was sitting there. Have you ever seen that. a comedy show on the ABC? Oh, it's extraordinary. It's terrible. Mm. I'm yet to see one. No, I know. We're waiting for one. <laughs> I know. I mean, you yeah. see the classic English. We'd have to go back as far as Auntie Jack to find something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Auntie Jack was yeah. great. You that's know. the 70s. Yeah, uh, that's <laughs> the 70s. No, I mean, you see the classic English stuff. You know, occasionally they have the classic English stuff on the ABC or whatever, and that's great. But you know, I remember there was uh, Woke this, ain't funny. this Woke new comedy. Ain't funny. Yeah, like this woman. What's her name? I can't remember her name. She looks like a. She, I think she's a lesbian, kind of a butch lesbian. Mm. He sits there basically just lecturing on kind of like left wing and LGBT kind of uh, politics, mm. and it's supposed to be funny. It's mm. like it's the joke is like you know lecture, lecture, lecture. White men are assholes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. that's the joke. Yeah, yeah. And there was another one. We've been watching it, witnessing it for a long time, and that's yeah. the thing too about policies. Because how do you keep the bastards honest? And yeah. you would think that that the natural inclinations of a liberal party yeah. would be to do something about that, but they will never do anything about it because they're frightened of it, aren't they? They are. So is the media wagging the tail? The, 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 of the oh, I think it has. Yeah. And I think it's been yeah. allowed to get away with it, hasn't yeah. it, Damo? Yeah. And like, it's extraordinary too because. As I said, we've had a conservative government now for mm. 10 years, haven't we, approximately? Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, and obviously it was Tony Abbott before. Um, and that's had a small breakout of yeah. uh, a Labor government two terms before that. And there was yeah. a lot of, you know, how was the longest serving Liberals yeah. before? Yeah, Howard before. Yeah, yeah, Why wasn't yeah. nothing done about the mm. ABC? Mm. I mean, it's extraordinary. Why is there not one conservative show? Even one conservative spokesperson? I mean, on Q&A, mm. why are there not two hosts? Why is there not Stan Grant mm. and Andrew Bolt? You know what I mean? Like, like after they, some they adjustment they period, watch yeah. the ratings go through the roof. It would go through the yeah, roof. For if, a while. if they had Andrew yeah. Bolt on as a yeah. co-host with Stan Grant. Now, Stan Grant can be as left as he liked, but if he was being counted of by course. Andrew Bolt, that That's, would actually make for an interesting discussion. Yeah, it would. It really would. Yeah. 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 But it's forbidden. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it forbidden? Well, I don't know. Oh, I think, too, there's, there's no political courage yeah. left anymore. So, I mean, I don't say that yeah. Howe was necessarily a courageous politician, but he reached a conviction around the GSD, didn't he? And he saw he did. a colleague of his be defeated. Yep. Houston was defeated because of the GSD because Keating just tied him in absolute yeah. knots. Made knots. him look like a fool because mm. he couldn't answer it Correct. on national TV when Keating was dominating the political scene. Yep. Howard brought it back and people said, don't do it. 
don't do it. Don't do you know? it. Mm. And and he won an argument and he snuck back in. You he know? did, yeah. He did sneak back in on it. And then so I wonder where's Morrison's courage? Like yeah. he must realise now he needs to have a moment of political courage. It felt like he had a mm. moment of courage mm. when backs were to the wall and it looked like Shorten would definitely be the uh, yeah, yeah. the Prime Minister in yeah. uh, Well he, he did stand up a bit. He won in a, he won Well he well. did, yeah. but he won it on climate. Yeah, he did. Yeah, um, yeah. Their extreme climate agenda, and yeah, he wasn't yeah. going to be any party to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he gets in office, doesn't mm-hmm. take long, and he, he becomes party to that. Yes, yeah, someone got to him. He yeah. lost his all conviction. Trump oh, lost office, oh, no. so he, did he lose moral support in losing that support mm-hmm. that the, you know, the biggest nation in the world this would give This is what's extraordinary. You know, like, uh, well, that's, it's that courage, though, Richard. That, that doesn't mm-hmm. exist anymore. No, it doesn't. Uh, would you like to bring that back to politics? Well, you can't bring it back from the Senate. I don't no. think I wouldn't be presumptuous to think I'm going to swan in there and I'm going to show them a few things. Well, I don't think that, but, uh, let, can but we I have think that conversation? What, what happened? Independent senators do have a voice, obviously. I mean, you, you've seen, I mean, sometimes they're off for the, for, the, for the left or the current thing, like Jackie Lambie's had a voice kind of being very pro-vax or whatever. I mean, independent senators can have a, have a voice. So, um, well, I think too, I think with the Morrison government, yeah. and maybe they clearly don't have any conviction around it, yeah. to talk about the mandates, why don't they argue, because I've just been looking yeah. at the Constitution, which is an amazing yeah. document. Cool. You know, and I've never spent much time with it. I don't know enough about it, mm. but I'm investigating it. Yeah. I had a friend who's done some constitutional law take me mm. through some of it. And I don't know why some arguments haven't been made from you know the so-called right exactly. about protecting... Why don't it? Well, it's there. Yeah, it's it there is. in 51... Yeah. 23A, when it says it against any medical conscription, yep. the state cannot force yeah. you into medical conscription, Isn't which I think was I think was amended in the Constitution in like 1946. Yeah. I wonder what just happened. Yeah. What just happened to want that amendment to yeah, be in there? Exactly. You know, after right. what happened, and not only that, not only are there things that are in our own Constitution about that, there are international laws like the Nuremberg laws. Well, that's and right. You, and you see that during this COVID crisis. Both have been sidelined. So really easy to make an ethical argument. You yeah. might lose that debate, yeah. but make it. Yeah. Make it. It's no, they won't even make it. Yeah. Why? So what does Morrison hope to be? Like the, the lesser and this is evil why he appears of the two. With, and this is why he appears wishy-washy, because I remember at the start of this crisis, he said, well, we can't force people to be vaccinated. And he stuck to that position, but he allowed the mandates. But I mean, pow- he, I mean, mandates are coercion. But is their powers so big and so overbearing that it's too threatening for a middle power like Australia or a leader of a middle power like Australia? to even to begin to stand up to it, to the machinations of globalism. Of the globalism. Because the yeah. globalists want something else. Are you going to stand in the way, mate? Really? Well, look, you? Exactly. Do you have the courage to stand in the look, way? I believe, so for example... You a wartime prime minister, someone like Curtin was. You right? do. Who died in office. Or well, you need a Menzies or someone like... You need someone mm, with some guts and balls. Mm. Um, you know, like, I mean, Tony Abbott, to a certain extent, was somebody who didn't go along with a lot. But see, that's, you can see that in the Liberal Party, there's been a lot of... You know what you call, um, you know, almost like um, what Chamberlain kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, you know, they take part in the Never arguments. Chamberlain, yeah, yeah, as opposed like, to Lindy, yeah, yeah, no, not Lindy, <laughs> not Lindy, not bigger, got my baby stuff. But no, like you know, we're like being conciliatory towards mm-hmm. them. You know, they they take part. They don't just say, "Listen, this is bullshit. This is all a distraction. Mm-hmm. This is all a lie." You know what I mean? I mean, for example, there's a strong argument you can you can make apropos of climate change that I mean, even if you were to say, you know, that the hysterics are real. Whatever Australia does isn't going to make that slightest f all. Yeah, but the dip, to, well, on somebody put it go, okay, that's okay. We'll take climate change at face mm. value if we're going to do that. Mm. Well, why don't we investigate a nuclear industry in Australia? Oh mm. my God, I know, I know. You can't. Do you know you what can't. I mean? Are yeah. you serious about this? I know. What? But you want to go to France, who runs something like seventy percent of its power from nuclear, and I has know. done for a long time. I know. I know. A place that's celebrated by the the woke elite. You know, Paris, exactly. Paris. But you can't do that here. Yeah. Why? Like why? China has. Imagine something the corollary of industry that would flow on from that. The I know. Other, it's extraordinary. You know, you know, like I know. In medicine, the applications for no, a strong exactly. industry like that. Uh, it's extraordinary. And you've got like a country like China that has 3,600 um, coal-powered, fa- sorry, coal-powered... Um, Coal-fired power, power stations. stations. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Thank That's a tongue. Say Christmas. that three times. Say that yeah. three times. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, CCP and they're building two or 300 more each year, right? Yep. You know, yep. No, no trouble. And they're mm-hmm. going to keep doing that, mm-hmm. right? Because their economy yep. is growing and growing and growing and they need yep. more power. Yep. And yet we have yep. six. Yep. And we're meant to lose mm-hmm. our six. Which mm-hmm. will, regardless, but it's simply because the technology at Pro Pro Renewables isn't up to the standard of, you know, the old systems. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They're going to make the price. I mean, it's going to get so you can't keep mm-hmm. your heater on in winter. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to just wear like 10 blankets. I mean, that's the kind of thing you would do in the third Should world. Should we start talking about yellow privilege? 
Yeah. This is Do they talk about yellow privilege? Well, we talk they about white privilege. But There's 1.3 billion Chinese. I'm telling you, they're not talking about yellow privilege, even as they not. start to make great gains no, for themselves no. and, and feed that population. Mm. Who's going to resent that? No. But And isn't it ridiculous? But too? we have to be self and in a way, flagellating. Of course, we're always self flagellating. And, and like in European countries or, you know, the that are predominantly European, there's this whole anti-white, you know, anti-white male discussion and everything. But in, in China, do they get mm. on their television and talk about how, how awful the Chinese are or have been? Never. I wonder how long you'd last. <laughs> you, you would, <laughs> believe me, yeah. you know, the nationalists and the communists would happily So maybe I'm a nationalist then because some mm. sense of national pride is surely it's a good thing, like some sort of personal And pride. it's definitely come out in the freedom movement that obviously you've been part of. You, 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 just one thing you can't ignore is the flags everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, some flags you didn't mm. even know existed. The upside down. An Australian flag Upside, yeah. and also the Eureka flag in and, distress you know, exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah but so many people that's the thing so many people and so if you can harness some of those people to vote for me in the election this is clearly what I want to do and there's yep. other people that are trying to harness them as well yep. which I understand you yep. know so if people want to support your run for the Senate how do they go about yeah. it is there a Facebook group they can join yeah at the moment there's at um Damien Richardson for the Senate. So yep. you've, got to, you've got to put in the at first. Yep. At Damien Richardson for the Senate. Yep. And I, I am very much hoping by the time this goes to air, yep. there will be our webpage as well, which is www.damienrichardson for the Senate. Yeah, yep. that's happening as well. So there's a, an ability to donate there yep. too if you really can like that, this. People, if they wish to donate, it. can they support it? They can support it. Once that webpage is up, yes, you yep. can support it because there's lots of back end things need to be done. Yep. So you don't end up like Pauline Hanson doing something wrong and maybe ending up in jail. What happened there? On a technicality. Yeah. Well, I don't know exactly yeah. what happened there, but I'm just imagine yeah because yeah, they, be ca- they want to catch you on a technicality yeah they, they, they want to dot the eyes um, yeah, you got to yeah. dot your eyes and you cross your teeth and when you don't know what that is because you yeah. haven't necessarily run a political yeah, yeah. campaign before you don't you know and this and, is a way they almost stop oh, independence from absolutely you know. and they have a big back end too and yep. this is another way they do it is by asking you your policy on every single thing like we've yeah. ranged very broadly in this yes, discussion have, yeah. which is great we're mm. friends we can do that mm-hmm. but they want to catch you out they do. as an individual where they've got you know a hundred years of yeah, people yeah. developing policy with hundreds of people yeah, there yeah. working with advisors and written, different yeah. advisors that be talking about it. You're the one spokesperson, this emphasis, that emphasis, one yeah. spokesperson yep. for a seat in yep. the Senate. Yep. But that's the problem with the structure of the system at the moment. It is, it's because yeah. it relies so much on party loyalty, which mm-hmm. it allows it no ability to have any flexibility to meet what an individual might be arguing for. And we've seen that and as we've amassed they, time and time again. And this is how they corral protest. opinion. And you say that there's yes. only seven um, senators, uh, some independent, some from the Liberal Party, have spoken out against it. There that seems I to can be, count. Yeah, yeah there yeah. seems to be none. Maybe yeah. Catherine Kitchen was one. You know what I mean? Well, she, she might have been. Yeah, she was somebody been, who yeah. definitely was happy to speak mm. to conservatives. Mm. So it's interesting, isn't it? But this is how they corral people. There might have been more that wanted to speak mm. out, but they just couldn't. Well, the crowd. It's like a deal was done too. They passed that legislation where mm-hmm. the uh, Liberal Democrats had to change their name. Yeah. Right? What was that about? So yeah. and they've been in operation for thirty years. Yeah. And then the and the quid pro quo for the Labor Party was the DLP, the Democratic Labor Party, uh-huh. had to also change their name. So yeah, they yeah. work in collusion quite often, yeah. the two major, major parties. parties. Yeah, yeah. So as I say, don't vote major. Vote yeah, a minor. Yeah. You Indeed. Know, vote a minor party. Vote Damien yeah. Richardson. Yeah, vote Damien Richardson. For, for the Senate. Thank you, mate. This has been great. Yeah. This is the report from Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We'll do this again sometime. You know, great, we'll have mate, another as thing. we go along, yeah. Because more policies will develop. I'm working on yep. our next one, which is Tell the Truth, yep. which is ultimately about the bureaucracy telling us the truth. Nice. About the nature of uh, the, well, the things we've been discussing uh, Very good. today. Well, thank you for listening. And it's been a pleasure talking to you today, Damien. And uh, best of luck with your campaign. Thanks, Richard. Cheers.